I'd now like to talk about data modeling in the context of how it is you start to build your business app. At some point, you're going to need some data and you're going to need to structure it in a particular way. This isn't intended to be all of data modeling by any stretch of the imagination, but I do want to put it in the context of how you build you know, your business app and what that process would be look, looking like. Now, this isn't going to sound like it makes it very easy, but I'm going to suggest that actually in a lot of cases, the data model that's required to support what you are trying to achieve is emergent. It's actually emergent from your user stories and your wireframes and potentially even the sorts of screens that you're expecting to see. It starts to, it starts to sort of kind of come to the surface. Now, I think the place that it comes to surface the best is in fact in your process wireframes, because those are the things that start to talk about different users of your application and actually the different things that are happening within your application. So using your process wireframes is probably going to be the thing that's going to help you the most. But using your user stories will also help with that as well, because they'll start to sort of help shape that idea about what it is we need. And one thing I would be suggesting at this point is that, you know, you're looking for the simplest data model that you can think of in order to um, to be able to be successful. But by the same token, you do need to consider, you know, what is it? Where's this thing going to go in the future? Because there's a very, very high chance that that it will actually head off in a direction that, that even the users hadn't initially expected. So it's a very, very careful process you need to go through. And that may involve you actually going back to the business saying, hey, have you thought about this? And, and that's where you can add some great value to the process. So do use your process wireframes. Uh, and do be aware of the other available data sets that already exist, you know, so you don't want to be reinventing data and data sets just for yourself. If that data is already there, then then don't recreate it. Try and leverage what is there already. And that will make for a, a better overall experience and putting your app in context with other apps as well. And that's kind of way Dataverse actually comes and becomes a very strong offering because that's what it's there to be able to do. The other thing to say is take your time. Um, you, there's a very good chance that you won't get your data model right to start with, um, but don't be surprised if that's the case. Um, but but do be aware that, that don't start building a load of things if you think your data model is going to change because the data model is the rock upon which you build your application and you build your your cloud flows and your your the whole experience so it is absolutely fundamental to to what you're doing what I'm now going to do is I'm actually just going to jump across to Visio as a way of just expressing a few tables of data and so on. It's a way of doing things. I'm not saying it's the only way. Personally, I would quite often use pen and paper. I would even consider actually modeling the data in Excel uh, because then you can start to do things like you can take it from Excel and you can put it into um, into Power BI and if it doesn't work in Power BI it definitely won't work uh, as an application. So what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to jump into Visio and just show you some ideas around around data modeling. So we're looking at this credit approval process. Now, what we now need to do is we now need to think about um, about what that might look like in, in terms of data. Now, what I can see here is a number of potential data sources. So I'm sort of thinking the customer, we should really have a table for the customer. Um, I'm sort of thinking that we probably need to have something for, you know, it could be that the customer is its own entity of itself. Uh, that's uh, that's a possibility, but it could also be, um, you know, that you're using the contacts entity. You've certainly got the uh, something that is a bit more internal in terms of the 
the the internal users but then we need to start thinking about you know how how are we going to actually express this we've even got um we've got this idea of a call do we record the fact that the call has taken place i think we possibly do um and we can actually even see that there's actually an order some kind of order entity here uh, and and we can see the process that goes on so we can reach out to different processes but i'm really concentrating on what we need to be successful here and so to that end we would then sort of consider we'd we'd actually put things on the screen here we would then start to um we would then start to i'm not going to bring in swim lanes i'm just using this as a very simple way of saying well actually i know this says process here but i'm thinking about entities and double click on there and i'm going to say well maybe we've got a customer entity um and that can go in there. Uh, maybe we've got a, um, maybe we have um, an orders entity, orders. So a customer could have more than one order, in which case we would go to our connectors and then we'd do a right angle here. Now this isn't perfect from my point of view in the sense of um, it doesn't do things like one to many. So I guess with the arrow, you'd think about that as being a, a one to many sort of relationship. So there's better ways of expressing it, but you're starting to get the idea of maybe us having people internal to the organization uh, and and where they might sit in terms of, in terms of this, because um, we've got, uh, it could be, for example, that we have, um, we have sales users And it could be that we then kind of go on and grab this connector and we then say, well, actually, um, we, we maybe maybe when an order is placed, we associate it with a sales user, say that might be uh, something quite often having a status table is a useful thing because then you can track the status of the entity uh, of the transaction as it goes through. So there's a status entity um, and, you know, and so we're starting to get the, the idea, the bare bones of what this might look like. So it's gone to this connectors here now. If I click on there, I think I get to my connectors, then I can go right angle uh, and then I can drag that in there. So we have one table with all of our statuses. So you can start to see that very quickly we've got this idea of the sorts of tables that might be needed to support what we're, what we're actually trying to do here. And we can color them in different ways if we think that's going to be helpful to the process. That brings us to the end of the lesson on on data modeling in the context of your overall building of a business application. I hope you found this lesson useful and I will see you again in the next lesson.